Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, now let's talk sports. Manchester City and Chelsea have joined Real Madrid and Paris Saint-Germain in the uh, hat for the big ears. While Arsenal and Manchester United are rubbing shoulders with Villarreal and AS Roma elsewhere. As a result, there's a pretty high chance that an English club will be taking home at least one piece of uh, European silverware this season, or perhaps even two, like the dramatic 2018-2019 campaign. Can you imagine the absolute scenes? It would be totally staggering for Europe's top, cl uh, top club competitions to be won by two Premier League clubs again, but especially when they're from the same city. It also would seem so surreal seeing the United and City lining up against each other in the UEFA Super Cup. It uh, looks like good times for those who are you know, fans of the English Premier League. And so uh, let's uh, get into a conversation about that this morning with Wally Scott. Good morning to you. Good morning, sorry. Good, good morning, morning Vivian. Yeah, good All right. Um, so, yes, um, Europa League, there's two English teams, uh, uh, Manchester United and Arsenal, hoping that they make it to the finals. There's also Chelsea and Manchester City in the Champions League currently. Um, there's always, you know, an argument, you know, there's some of them that they call the Farmers League. There's, uh, you know, always arguments about which league really is the best in the world. Is the English Premier League currently seeming like the most stable and the best league in the world? On paper, yes. Um, because there are four teams in the league right now who are actually in the semi-finals of the Europa League and the UEFA Champions League. However, that would be on paper. <clears throat> because um, I've always been one who, this is not a joke, I've always been one who believes that um, the English man is not built to play football. She's just built to take the ball, listen to instructions and pass. You know, they have no skills whoever. They can't dribble, except for a very few. Paul Gascoigne, David Beckham, very, very few, you know. Wayne Rooney. The, Wayne Rooney. They are, not, they are only a very few British footballers who are actually built to play football, like Nigerians, Brazilians, we're built to play football, you know. We can dribble, we can do everything with football. We can, you can actually have fun watching us playing football, you know, but... Um, the English Premier League is definitely the most to watch across the world, has the m most major TV rights in the world, massive sponsorship, of course, um, and uh, they're doing quite well. It's believed that um, football came from England, believed, I say, because um, they can't play football, you know. And there are no points in the English League when um, the, the FA had to meet, serious meeting, and used Arsenal as a case study when he said, you must have at least five. English players in your team. And Arsenal was the case study under under Arsene Wenger. He had no English player in his team. All 22 players. First 11, second 11, not one English player. And I said, okay, good, you must have at least five players. And somewhere along the line, Arsenal, as usual, are still cutting corners. They are still playing a large amount of players who are not from England. And then when they bring you a Bukayo Saka, a Balogun, a something easy, and the FA comes and says, these guys don't have English names, but they are English citizens. <laughs> they have English passports, you know? Because these guys are Nigerians, they are built to play football, but they are fortunately or unfortunately English citizens. So when the FA complains and says, this in Arsenal, you have come again, you know? these guys are not English. They're like, but they have English passports. You know, so they can actually play. So the truth is, the English Premier League has, is pacey, is fast. And um, asking me, I was talking to someone earlier this morning, Mikhail, and he was telling me that, listen, Let's watch the matches that have been played in the English League since post-COVID. Not one match. We can actually count the matches that have ended in goalless draws. So maybe five or six out of over 50-something matches played over the season. Five or six matches. And you can actually ask yourself, most games have ended in at least two goals. Whether 1-1, 2-0, at least two goals. That shows the game is moving. And the, the best players in the world are being bought by these guys like every day, like every hour. However, when push comes to shove, it's only going to be unfair to say, okay, a whole league. We're looking at the PSG going up against the Man City in a bit. And we have Man City with all the stars in the world, Kylian Mbappe, Neymar. They're going up against a Man City. We've got, yeah, Kevin De Bruyne. We don't see them as stars. In the I think the, the other clubs make a bigger scene of their players. And then the English League just play as a team. But on paper, as we speak now, yes, we can actually say yes, on paper, the English EPL is the best league in the world. They've got four teams in semi-finals of the biggest club European competitions in the world. And what yeah, else? That should have so my it, and so, so, justify the means. So if, if that's just on paper, for real then, which is the best league for you? That will be hard because, um, you know, um, teachers go to work on the students and then you go from the Ministry of Education, you go to the school to go and say, good, who's your best students? 
and the teachers come out and say, listen, we've done assessments, we've done exams, this is our best students. It would be unfair for me to say, okay, good. That's what you're... So right now on paper, they are the best league in the world. Okay. You know? <laughs> that, that, it would be unfair to actually go against them. But I have seen other leagues bring out just one star. Um, in the Spanish La Liga, Ronaldo Messi. In the Bundesliga, you see um, um, Lewandowski. Lewandowski yeah. You know, Alan. one star, you know, but in, in, in the in, um, French Le Champion, Mbappe, you know, Neymar, Edison Cavani. But in the English Premier League, you can't actually, you can only talk about the team mm -hmm. as a whole. You can't always, yes, those days, yes, you know, a man you when they had Eric Cantona, you know, um, David Beckham. But now you can't actually just single last one player and say, this is the best player in the team in, in EPL. They are always players the team. So, man, you can talk about Paul Pogba, mm -hmm. you can talk about... Um, um, Bruno Fernandes, you know, Aaron Juan Bisaka. You go to Arsenal, Pepe, Lacazette, it, um, Pierre America, Aubameyang. You go to Man City, Kevin De Bruyne, Sergio Kun Aguero. There's, there's, you know, you can't just, like, you can't do yeah, but, it. But it. It's it, convenient it, in the clubs. It, it should also, you know, come for something when people describe the EPL as the most competitive league in the world. It's the um, most pacey. Okay. Um, it's the most on, on TV. You know, there, there's no one in, in, in let's, you know, let me use Africa as a case study. Sorry, I'm doing that. It's a third world country, though. A third world continent, though. And there's no um, one, no youngster who likes football, basically, in Africa. No matter how hidden the village might be in Africa, that will tell you he's never heard of some player in the English Premier League. He might not have heard of Mbappe before. Mbappe, um, Neymar, maybe even Lewandowski. But there's no way he will tell you he has never heard Rooney. There's always a man you shares the Rooney name behind it everywhere in Africa. You see a kid playing football on the streets of, um, in Africa, and if it's an Anglophone country, it's a Man U jersey with Rooney behind it. If it's a Francophone country, it's a Messi jersey with Barcelona. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so the truth be said, football goes everywhere, but the English Premier League is everywhere. But does this change every year? Because we, 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 we can have this conversation again next year, and find out you know, that the, there's no English team in the semi-finals or making it to the semi-finals or making it to the finals of the Champions League or the Europa League. Let's just stop the ball um, at the quarterfinals. You know, the quarterfinals, um, there's always been an English team in the quarterfinals. Whether it's the Europa League, whether it's the UEFA Champions League, it always stops at the quarter. Like um, um, on my program later today, um, Man City, um, Pep Guardiola, the coach, was talking about the fact that um, he wants to try and break the semi-final jinx. He's always gotten crashed out in the quarterfinals. Either by last time it was Tottenham, an English team. Other time it was Villarreal. Other time it was, you know, he's always crashed out then. But finally, Jinx is broken. He's in the semifinals. Is he going to go the old hog? I don't know. But he's broken the Jinx now. But, you know, the, the teams, like you read, the chances of at least an English club taking silverware home, European silverware home, is almost there. It's close. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so this is what I was trying to find out. Because last year, um, there was no English team in the finals. Um, they did make it to the quarterfinals, but eventually got knocked out somehow, some way. Um, so it, it, is, is it relevant, you know, now that there are, you know, four of these teams, you know, in the finals for us to have this conversation? If they don't make it to the finals next year, can we still say that it is the best league in the world? There's a large... Um, you're putting me on your hot seat there. Okay, there's a, there's a large possibility that if there are four teams from the Spanish La Liga mm -hmm. or four teams from the French Le Championnat next season, God willing, we'll be here. We'll be talking about is the Spanish La Liga the best league in the world okay. on paper? So it depends. So, so, <laughs> so it depends on how many league can actually. It's it's massive to have four teams from one league in the semi-finals of the biggest club competition in the world. I think it's massive. Absolutely. And I'm sorry. I know Vivian wants to also throw in some things, but I, I also want to know what happened to uh, the other big teams this year. What this happened to happen. Juventus? What happened to Barcelona? What happened to Bayern Munich, who, who currently are, are no longer in the It's race. called burning out. It's called burning out. I think um, um, the English teams also have this. That's a good one. I think the English teams have always also have this plus for them. They're always um, remanufacturing. They're always looking into the academies. They're always looking into... Um, Barcelona used to do that. Real used to do that. Now, the coaches that they've brought in in the past... I've always looked for ready-made materials, you know, names, already built names. And you buy these guys at 25, 26, and then the striker should have max 33-year lifespan. By 33, he's almost done. You know, but you're looking at the English Premier League where they're going into the academies. You're, bringing out, you're looking at a man who's major, major striker, 
who's got their back up front is about 23 now, Marcus Rashford. You've got another one, the other one, the other is back up. He's 21, Mason Greenwood. That's what they do, you know. But looking at um, a La Liga where the coach comes and wants to buy Eden Hazard, who is already 32, and then he comes and he becomes glass and he gets injured every time. Or you want to depend on a Ronaldo who is 33, or a Messi who's going to be 34 this year. How? You know, but you're looking at the Premier League who are actually realizing this, these guys are going to fail. They are going to burn out eventually. Mm -hmm. Look at Liverpool. They are going through that right now. They are burning out. Fantastic team two, three seasons ago. Now Messi, 30-something. Um, Firmino. They were the biggest assassins on the, in, on, on the European um, continent against any team. Three points to attack, Firmino, Mo Salah, Sadio Mane. But now they are all in their 30s. Mm -hmm. Going to their mid-30s. And for a striker, that is too old. For a defender, maybe. For a goalkeeper, maybe. For a striker, no. When you're over 30, it's almost done. You know, but you're looking at um, um, the Nigerian fans, you know, when somebody bombards us on our forum and talks about Arsenal, become an Arsenal fan, it's, it's very annoying because I don't know how Arsenal did it yesterday. I have to mention this. I don't know how they did it yesterday, but I've always described Arsenal on my shows as a child who is extensively dull, oh but has a good handwriting. That's harsh. You know, Arsenal play very good football. They just don't score the goals. You know, it, it's, it's convenient for you to have a good handwriting, but you, you, you are dull. You, you, know, but, yeah, you, you have to really win. You know, you know but you I mean, know, it's, but it's so good for them against Slavia yeah. Praha. Yeah. I think it's fantastic. I, I have always been one of the major critics of Arsenal. I've always said that they need to get their acts together. I've always said that Lacazette is a lousy striker who um, sees the goal and also feels he should run away from instead of trying to score the goal. Our Boomer Young, fantastic player, not getting enough playing time this time around. But they came to the party yesterday. Yeah, they did come to the party. And um, our Boomer Young, um, Lacazette, came to the party, surprised me. Um, our very own young man who has refused me for Nigeria, Bukayo Saka, has been doing things for us now. Um, he has said, I'm not going to play for Nigeria. I don't even know anyone there. I don't know Nigeria. My name is a Nigerian name. I am a Nigerian. But I'm English. So I'm going to play for the three Lions. So he's doing well for Arsenal right now. I think um, the English clubs should have a chance. Um, when Lampard went to the market to get players, I told my friends as he bought them that this guy is not buying EPL players. He's buying Champions League players, and he's proven that. He bought players like Kai Averitz, Hakim Ziyech, Timo Werner. These are men who have been to the Champions League and are not scared of friend or fools. They'll take you out. And now they're in the semi-finals. First time for Chelsea in, a, in like forever. How do you think, how do you think they would um, fare? Do you think they will make it to the finals, both Man City and Chelsea now? Asking my opinion, I have never, ever liked Chelsea, but the truth must be said. Chelsea is going to go up against a very depleted Real Madrid side. Uh, Gemma decided to only have a player in Vinicius Jr. who can yes. make the runs and try and overrun you. And I think Chelsea do have the defenders who can actually stop him in the gap. Ben Chilwell can do that. A lot more, more players can do that. Thiago can do that. So I think um, Chelsea will give Real a run for their money. If there's any English team that can bring the championship home to England, surprisingly, I'll pick Chelsea, not Man City. Uh, why, Man, why City, not Man, City? Man City against Paris Saint-Germain. I just said Chelsea against a depleted Real Madrid side. I didn't say Man City against a depleted PSG side. They're going up against a smoking hot PSG side. And don't forget Al Khalifa, that's the guy who bought Paris Saint-Germain, has said that I'm spending so much money not because I want to win the championnat. I'm tired of winning that one. I want to win the Champions League. So he has spent so much, he intends to spend some more. And I can ima imagine how much he's going to spend if he does get the Champions League. So the owner has been spending so much money for this. He's, he's like a meter away. He'll die there. So I don't think uh, Man City would have a chance against PSG. But Real, uh, Chelsea against Real Madrid, yes. Well, it's, um, it's a Pep Guardiola against um, Coleman. Um, you know, of course, that, that should count for some level of experience on both sides. Um, you Pep know, Guardiola yeah. against Mauricio uh, Pochettino. Uh, Pochettino, I beg yeah. your pardon. Not and that would be two uh, players and uh, coaches who have actually been in the English league, done this there, and um, they are both coaches who, have, who can play man games. You know, but all things being equal, Pochettino has more bullets, has a bigger gun, yeah. and has more money to spend. I'm sure you got a, a, a loaded package this morning, right? But are you going to leave the morning show without saying anything about the National Sports Festival? Sports Festival has come and gone. Um, we, I, 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 I we, was going to ask the media officer who was on the show on Tuesday a question, but unfortunately, the network came to his rescue. Um, fantastic show, um, Sports Festival. I think um, they upped the ante 
things actually got better. Yeah, but I want to talk about Delta states that cutted away lots of the gold medals. Delta do, you, states, do you think it's because of the incentive? The governor had promised We one, like money for yeah, Nigeria. You can imagine... <laughs> one you, million you can for imagine every gold medal. You, go yeah. out there, win gold, and bring... See, do you know how many mothers in Delta states were praying and fasting for that one million of their children? If that, that one alone is enough for them to win, you know. <laughs> but I think it, it's fantastic. I think the governor has actually given the other governors a run for their money. Absolutely. Now, you know, if you promise them money, they will win. They will win. In Nigeria, we did. Yeah, they but doesn't win. it also, you know, you know uh, share a lot about the Ministry of Sports in every state, in how much training, how much investment they put into sports in uh, the individual states? I think when it comes to the festival, we only have two major problems. First of um, the fact that um, poaching comes to play. I'm Lagos State. I, I, I train Osarogi for years. And then when it's time for the festival, someone comes to this Osaroge, you are Edo. And then he poaches him with money or whatever. And then Edo come, um, Osaroge comes out for Edo State on the day of the event. And it's very painful. That's, you see, at the end of the day, we're not hurting each other. We're hurting the country. Because the sports festival is not a do or die affair. We're supposed to be grooming players. It's supposed to be a grooming ground for the future. Future Olympians, future Commonwealth um, athletes. Not for uh, my state must win. That's not what it's about, really. All right. Congratulations to Delta State regardless. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Wally Scott, thank for you, sorry, joining you. us. Thank, thank you. you. And uh, thanks for staying with us all through the week. It's been a very interesting uh, week here on The Breakfast. Uh, if you missed out on any of the uh, conversations that we had since Monday, join us on our social media platforms. It is simply at Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and same thing with our YouTube channel, at Plus TV Africa. I wish you a great Friday ahead. I am Osao Gye Ogbonwa. I am Vivian Oguche. Have a good weekend.